Welcome to my video tutorial on spinal pia mater. Spinal pia mater, it is thicker and less vascular than the cerebral pia mater. It enters into the anterior median fissure of the spinal cord. Here is the spinal cord and here are the spinal nerves arising from the spinal cord. The spinal pia mater extends as tubular sheets around the spinal nerves till their exit at intervertebral foramina, where it blends with the perineurium of the spinal nerves. Spinal pia mater shows few special features or modifications which are four in number. They are phylum terminale, ligamentum denticulatum, subarachnoid septum and linea splendens. They all help in maintaining the position of spinal cord within the vertebral canal by anchoring it onto the dura mater. Let's learn about these modifications in detail. Phylum terminal. It is a 20 cm long non-nervous filamentous thread. Let's see its extensions. Here is the phylum terminal, which begins from the tip of terminal part of the spinal cord known as conus medullaris, which lies at the lower border of L1 vertebra. From there, the phylum terminal descends between a bunch of spinal nerves known as corda equina which is formed by L2 to coccygeal pairs of spinal nerves. Here is the phylum terminal. It pierces the arachnoid matter and dura matter opposite the S2 vertebra. It leaves the sacral canal by passing through the sacral hiatus or hiatus sacralis and runs for a short distance on the dorsal surface of coccyx where it blends with the periosteum of first coccygeal vertebra. So the extension of phylum terminal is from the tip of conus medullaris till the dorsal surface of first coccygeal vertebra. The course of phylum terminal can be divided into two parts based on the relation between other meninges. Proximal part lies within the dural sheath known as phylum terminal internum whereas distal part lies outside the dural sheath known as phylum terminal externum which is also called as coccygeal ligament. Ligamentum denticulatum It is a coronally oriented pial sheath. It extends bilaterally from the sides of spinal cord lying between the ventral and dorsal roots of spinal nerves. Let's observe that in this video clip. That is the ligamentum denticulatum extending from the sides of spinal cord running between the two roots of spinal nerves. Here is the ligamentum denticulatum on either side of the spinal cord. Its lateral margin shows triangular shaped teeth like projections. Hence the name is derived as denticulatum. They are attached to the dura mater for the better anchorage of the spinal cord. The point to be understood here is each tooth is situated between the adjacent spinal nerve roots. Such teeth of ligamentum denticulatum are 21 pairs which are serially arranged one below the other. The first pair of teeth situated above attached to the margins of foramen magnum. They are related in front with the fourth part of vertebral artery and behind with the spinal root of accessory now. Last pair of teeth extend obliquely between the roots of T12 and L1 spinal nerves. Let's learn the surgical importance of ligamentum denticulatum. Attachment of the ligament to the spinal cord is utilized to approach sensory or pyramidal tracts within the anterolateral funiculus of the spinal cord during selective tractotomy operations. To reach the sensory tracts, the knife is placed in front of the ligament in sensory tract sections, whereas to reach the pyramidal tract, the knife is placed behind the ligament in pyramidal tract sections. Coming to the subarachnoid septum, it is a mid-sagittal pile sheath located on the dorsal surface of spinal cord along the posterior median sulcus. 
basically it is the extension from arachnoid matter which is bit interrupted in the cervical region linea splendens it is a median glistening thickened line along the anterior median fissure it is located on the ventral surface of lower part of the spinal cord and continuous below with the phylum terminal that is about the gross features of spinal pia mater and its modifications thank you for your patient listening keep learning